God is my life. He's given me life that people outside of him can't understand. He's changed me, what I like, what I want, how I think, what I want to be, and what I want to do with my life. I want to serve him because he gave everything for me. There is nothing else I want to do with my life and nothing else that is worthwhile except to serve him. I wrote those words at the age of 17 and meant every word of them. Never could I have imagined back then that someday I would ever reach a point where I would no longer consider myself to be a follower of Jesus. How is it possible that someone who built her entire life and identity around her faith just walk away from it all? So in today's video, I want to talk a bit about deconstruction. Deconstruction is basically the process of reevaluating your core beliefs. And for a lot of people, that looks like reevaluating their Christian faith. I'm really aiming to make this video for Christians, people of faith, who still very much would call themselves Christians, followers of Jesus, who might not understand what deconstruction is, maybe have heard of it but don't quite understand what it is, and just want to know more. Uh, my hope is to shed some light on that. A lot of Christians seem to think that people who walk away from their faith must not have ever been real Christians to begin with, but that is completely false. A lot of people who go through deconstruction were heartfelt, genuine believers, and I'm speaking from personal experience. What I want to do in this video is kind of break down how deconstruction happens by talking about my own story, what it looked like for me, sort of a case study. A couple of quick notes. I am going to be doing a really general overview of my deconstruction process, but I did write out this whole video in blog post form. So if you're interested in checking that out, I'll have the link below and it'll take you to my website, sarah-martin.com, where you can read a little bit more in depth about my deconstruction. So as I mentioned, this is going to be kind of a case study of what my deconstruction looked like. Uh, so just keep in mind, this is one example. Everybody's story is different, just as everyone's lives are different. So just something to keep in mind. What I've done for the sake of this video is, in going back and looking through kind of the past few years as my faith has shifted, I've broken down my own de deconstruction into nine different parts, nine different stages. Um, of course, life isn't quite as linear as that, but for the sake of organization and ease and flow, I've broken it down into nine different parts. So before we get into stage one of my deconstruction, a quick note just to kind of set the stage. I am a very analytical person. I always have been. My personality is one that I am very logical. I never really accept easy answers for things. I always want genuine answers. And so that's just something to keep in mind as I go through the rest of these stages of what happened to my uh, Christian faith is that my personality played a big role in me pursuing my questions and the answers that I felt like I needed to pursue, I guess. So stage one of my deconstruction was definitely going to college. I went to a small Christian liberal arts college and yes, it was Christian, it was conservative, but college played a huge role in teaching me how to think critically. I majored in psychology with a minor in theology and these two classes combined really challenged me to ask tough questions. My theology professors and philosophy professors especially always were trying to push students to to rethink all of the right answers we've been told about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and salvation. So they were really the ones that pushed me to start looking at things in a different way and to ask, well, why do, why do we believe this? Or why is this doctrine this way? Or what are the other options? What do other Christians believe? So college had a huge role in getting me to begin developing critical thinking skills. Stage two also happened while I was in college and that was going to Cambodia. My junior year of college, I spent three weeks on a cross-cultural trip to Cambodia. I think traveling outside of your own country in general is a very eye-opening experience. Um, for me, that was definitely the case. It's hard to even summarize everything that I learned in Cambodia, but I think the biggest thing 
that contributed to my deconstruction, my eventual deconstruction, was learning about Cambodia's genocide during the 1970s. I'm going to include some pictures from my trip. If you do not want to see any of them, you can skip forward to this timestamp, which I'll have on the screen. Some of the images are a bit disturbing. It was really crazy to to tour the sites of a of, of former torture camp and see holes where mass graves were, where they put the bodies of victims, and visiting a memorial built for the victims that was just stacked high with thousands of skulls. I don't even know what to say about it. Like, it just really is something that has stuck with me to this day. And I remember during that trip seeing these things, just asking, like, where, where was God in this? How does this line up with what I believe about God and how he works in each individual life and has purpose for each individual life? So Cambodia was really an eye-opening experience that got me wondering about what Christianity looks like in other parts of the world that aren't, that are very different from from America, from the American evangelical Christianity that I knew. The next stage was my first job that I got after graduating college. So the first job I got after I graduated was working as a mental health tech at a local psychiatric hospital. And for a lot of reasons, I was convinced that this was the job Jesus wanted me to be in. Felt like he confirmed it, he'd opened doors, he'd made a way for me to get this job, and it seemed like a perfect fit giving my degree in psychology. However, when I went in for my first day of training, every fiber of my being felt like this is not a good fit for me. This is not where I should be working. Like, no. <laughs> I ended up quitting after that first day because I knew it just was not for me at all. And that might not seem like a big deal, like, okay, you had what your first job didn't work out. But for me, it just did not fit in with my understanding of God and how he worked. Like, I had prayed so much over this job. There was a point where I thought I wasn't going to get it. And I did. I still did. And I really attributed that to Jesus working in the circumstances to, to make it possible for me to get this job. So that really kind of started forming cracks in my theology and cracks in wondering maybe I maybe I've got something wrong here about about God and about how he works. Stage four was my dating relationship unraveling. If you're interested in hearing more about this relationship in particular I'll have links below where you can check out some of my blog posts about it or I'll include a link at the top of this video where you can check out um, other videos that I've made about this relationship. This relationship, I had met this guy in college um, my sophomore year and we dated for two and a half years, almost three years. So I had graduated college. He lived out of state. We hardly ever got to see each other. I was really going through a sort of situational depression, not just because of the relationship, for, for other things too, but um, the relationship was a huge contributor to the state of my mental health, and so eventually I felt like I was forced to pick between God's plan for my life, God's pick for me, for my God's pick of spouse for me, or my mental health. And ultimately, I I chose my mental health. I just couldn't I couldn't see how it was going to work out. It's not that I didn't have faith that God could somehow work it out. I just, my mental health was really at stake. And so on the heels of the the job that had failed, now this relationship had ended. And I really began wondering, do I have something wrong here? Like, I think there is something wrong with the way that I have been approaching God and my faith and, you know, the ways that I believed that he worked in our lives it really kind of shattered how I understood God at that time. So stage five is depression. Yes, my mental health improved in different ways after I ended my relationship with my ex. However, I still was struggling with major depression at that point. My life really felt 
meaningless. I didn't know who I was anymore. My identity was entirely wrapped up in God and my faith in Jesus. And now that I was questioning that, questioning who he was, questioning what role he had in my life, uh, it really called into question who I was at my core. God was my purpose. God told me who I was and all of that was on shaking ground at this point. And so I was very, very depressed um, as a result of that. Stage six was getting involved with a Christian small group that was made up of people in a similar boat as me who were kind of rethinking just what faith in God looks like and who God is. And it was a really good group to be a part of. I felt like I had a safe space to to, to wrestle with some of the existential questions I was asking at that point and re-examine with other people like what what being a Christian looks like and what role God has in my life. Being a part of this group helped me start processing some of the cognitive dissonance that I had begun feeling when the first job didn't work out, when the relationship with my ex didn't work out, and even still dealing with depression, as well as really starting to build a more positive self-image, dealing with some of the crap that I still had as far as some of my insecurities and that sort of thing, and really start developing more self-awareness and being in tune with who I am and just different things like that. So the next stage in my deconstruction was meeting my now husband. For as long as I had been a Christian, I had been taught and fully believed that in order to be a real Christian, you needed to be a certain way, you needed to believe certain things, you needed to act certain ways, and you know, your relationship with Jesus needed to look a certain way. Like it was very particular and if you didn't meet those criteria you you really weren't a real christian however in meeting my husband who came from a catholic background and later shifted to lutheranism i started being exposed to other types of christians that didn't necessarily fit the boxes that i had been told you needed to check and that was that was really eye-opening for me Christianity doesn't have to look a certain way, but the evangelicalism that I had come from made it seem like you had to fit their definition or else you weren't really in the club. Another thing that really shifted for me in meeting my husband, while we were dating, I was faced headfirst with reevaluating how how I was going to date, what our relationship was going to look like, because I knew from my past relationship that there was a whole lot that didn't work out and I did not want to repeat that again. I knew dating needed to look different. I couldn't go through and live by the same rules that evangelical Christianity had taught me. So it was while dating my husband that I really really did some soul searching and re-examining what I believed about Christianity and sexuality, what the Bible says about sexuality, what authority it should have, just all of those sorts of questions. I discovered that a lot of views that I had held before were unhealthy and pretty negative, honestly. Moving on to stage eight, I was really in the middle of intense deconstruction at this point. I no longer felt safe asking the sorts of questions that I had progressed to asking in my Christian small group I was a part of. I felt like I was just thinking about things and asking questions that almost felt too heretical to, to, to bring up to this group. And so Thankfully, I was able to find a life coach online that became my new safe space to really start deconstructing. And it was in working with this life coach that I first heard the term deconstruction and knew 
wow, okay, this is, this is what I'm going through. There is a name for what I'm going through and I'm not alone. I'm not crazy. There are other people who go through this and it's okay. Like it's normal to go through this kind of stuff. That was a huge, huge deal for me because one of the most healing things is just knowing that you're not alone. It was also in working with my life coach that I was able to actually start naming things that I no longer felt comfortable believing about God, the Bible, just about my faith. And that was something entirely new for me. I was able to work on things with my coach that I didn't feel safe discussing with my Christian friends and family members. And I was able to work with my coach in recognizing things from my past and things from my theology that were honestly pretty toxic to believe. And again, as all of these experiences were, it was very eye-opening. So stage nine of my deconstruction was finding new communities. I didn't feel comfortable going to church anymore. I really didn't feel safe talking with a lot of the Christians that I had known from church and from college and really sharing like what was going on internally. I was afraid of being judged. I was afraid of being abandoned. So apart from my life coach at that time and my, my husband to an extent, I felt very much alone, very much isolated. So finding these new communities online was incredible. I knew from working with my coach that I wasn't alone, but getting plugged into some of these Facebook groups, finding some of these Instagram accounts, finding YouTube channels was so helpful for me. I finally had a space where other people were describing things like I had gone through and I was discovering a new language to describe this experience of deconstruction and it was so affirming. I could share my story and have people comment and say, I hear you, I see you, I'm so sorry for what you've been through, I can relate. Again, just so healing and so refreshing. And it was through hearing a lot of these stories from other people going through deconstruction that I really started to see a lot of spiritual manipulation in my past, even spiritual trauma in my past. And to be able to process that has been a really important step in finding resolution with with my past. And so in moving through all of these different stages, I'm currently at a point where I no longer consider myself to be a Christian. And I hope in breaking down what it took to get from point A to this point that you can maybe start to see how it progressed, why it happened. Again, my story is just one example, but I hope that when you hear of other people who are no longer Christians, that you will remember maybe this video and just remind yourself, like, I may not understand how they could walk away from their faith like that, but I do know that there is probably a story there that I don't know. And I hope my story also demonstrates that deconstruction isn't something that happens overnight. For most people, I'd say it happens gradually over months, years, for some people, even decades. It's not just something where you wake up one morning and go, oh, you know, I really don't want to follow Jesus anymore. For me, it was a process of really four to five years from, you know, being in college to to working with my life coach and really getting a part of getting into these new online spaces of people who have left evangelicalism and are deconstructing. If there's anything I wanna reiterate as I wrap up this video, it's that everyone has a story. Everyone has a unique journey that's taken them from whatever faith they started with to where they are now. And oftentimes, It's not because we chose to go through this, it's just because what we believed stopped aligning with what we were experiencing and what our reality turned out to be. And so 
often people who deconstruct their faith are left with a choice between either pretending everything is okay and kind of living a lie or really delving into the tough questions and there's no guarantee of where you'll you'll end up if when you go through that for some people do stay christians and they come out stronger and better in their faith for it and other people you know become agnostic or atheist or they don't know where they are and what they believe and that's really where i'm at i don't have a specific set of beliefs that i've come away with i just know that i have been true to myself in the process and that's all i can ask for the kindest thing you can do for someone who is reevaluating their faith and potentially facing deconstruction or is going through it currently is to just listen to their story you don't have to fully understand it you don't have to fully you know relate to it but the kindest thing that you can do is to just listen and affirm that that person's experience and that person's life is valid what they've gone through is real and the questions they're asking are important and a natural byproduct of what they've been through so please just just be a compassionate listening ear for them and affirm who they are and what they're going through they will appreciate it more than you know i hope this video has been helpful if you have any questions about my own story or about deconstruction feel free to leave a comment below or send me a message i'd be happy to dialogue more about deconstruction since it's been a huge part of my life and has changed everything for me i'll link some deconstruction resources below if you are interested in learning more about that that is it for me thank you so much for watching this video and please go out and make the world a kinder place Thanks.